before I even ask you guys questions, there's one homework problem that's been bugging me. I keep forgetting to talk about it. Uh, does that look familiar to anybody? I don't remember what section it's in, but uh, the question is, is this true? No. No. So many no's, but so many yeses in the homework. No. Uh, yeah, well, well, that's the most fundamental reason why you can't do that. I mean, what's the only time you can... Yeah, the bases aren't the same. So you can't even apply the add the the exponents rule because the bases aren't the same, right? Plus, when you do exponents, I really want this to make sense. When, when you do exponents, you're writing what you're going to eventually multiply. There's no multiplication happening yet, right? So I have three twos to multiply and three threes to multiply. Every two and three make a six. So how many sixes would there actually be? How many twos are there? How many threes are there? You can take every two and every three and put together make a six, right? So how many sixes would there be at the end? Three. Exactly. You don't have enough twos and threes to make six sixes. Yes, sir. Section 5.1. Cool, thank you. I knew it was one towards the end. So this is not true. The most fundamental reason why you can say it's not true is because the bases aren't the same. You're not allowed to do what they try to do, but even more fundamentally than that, there's not enough twos and threes to make six sixes. There's just eight. Okay, cool. Maybe everybody got that wrong. He's not here right now. Oh, well. Okay, so, you guys, any other... Oh, let me real quick give back stuff here. Let me see. I did create a few things. stuff around with me. Okay. Alright guys, any questions from homework? Yes ma'am. Sierra, you ready? Instructions say leave answer in standard form. Standard form is just, you know, oh my gosh, Jeff. It's just regular number, not scientific notation. It's a decimal number. That's what they call standard form. Uh, but how can I, what's the, oh, sorry, this is negative. Okay. So what's the, how do I attack this just the way it is? Minus three by five. Good. Right, so you get. Yeah. yeah, so here you get, well, here, let's see, you get here you get negative 15, I just want more people to agree with you, I like that, right, because what do you do when you have like bases, you add the powers, right, and now, the beautiful thing is, this isn't scientific notation, but who cares, because they don't want scientific notation answer. Uh, how many, what's this tell me to do with the decimal? Uh, yeah, make it smaller, yeah. right? So right now it's there, so I just... Oh. Exactly. Negative 1.5. Exactly. Negative 1.5. Now, if you weren't here yesterday, and you've never seen scientific notation before, that makes no sense. But watch the video or come see me. Yeah. 
In which section? Um, 5.5. Okay. I just need to make sure doing Yeah, that, that one's one of the harder ones on there, right? Because it's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, Yes. Right. So what operations are happening there? What are all the operations? Yeah, there's a uh, division. There's multiplication inside. And there's exponents. I love it. So each parenthesis, is there anything I could really, really do in there? No. And I even, I, I could bring this down, but then I have fractions inside of fractions. Let's not do that until we have to or whatever, right? You guys understand? So there's really nothing I could do inside. So the next level, of course, of order operations is? Outside. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do what this what is. The, and actually, what does this, what does this say? What does mine say? Sweet. <laughs> no? <laughs> is that reference? Yeah. What does mine say? I'm sorry. So this, <laughs> what does a negative power on anything mean? Uh, so this whole thing come down. can come down. Now there's multiple ways to do this. Multiple ways to do this problem. That's what I would do personally, right? You could bring the negative two in, but then it gets a little weird. What people always freak out is they don't do this correctly. So I don't know which way do you want to do it. Which way did anybody do this problem yet? Which way did you try to do it? I was gonna put both of them together, but then I didn't know what to do with the negative inside that one. Do you bring it up? You ready? All right, let's let's just do it like this. Okay. Let's do it like this. Uh, and I can do the same thing on the bottom, right? Because the next or, uh, uh, order operations is exports. So let's do that. Uh, so here, what do I get here? I get three to the um, minus uh, minus two. 3 to the negative 2, m to uh, the negative, uh, negative eight. 8, and then of course n to the negative, negative 2, over, over uh, 2, uh, 2, 3, 2 thirds, m, 2 to the third, m3, m to the third, uh, n negative 6, n to the negative 6. Uh, and now you can just look at it like, I hopefully, when you see this now, I've done this enough with you that you immediately know what to do next. Everything that's to a Flip. negative power just goes to the other side. I like it. So then, um, and see, this is what I was, uh, that's why I would just take this whole thing down first, because see how all of this came to, is going to come down? Yeah. And so either way you do it, it ends up doing the same thing. So those two threes are going to come down here. Everything's going to go down. Right? So those two threes go down, those eight ends go down, those two ends go down, and then these go up. Now, now let me make sure. Negative power means flip. If you have a bunch of negative powers, each thing you just put it on the other side. It's not a big deal that I'm doing right now, right? There's not I'm doing a lot. Uh, so on the top is just going to be what by itself? And Those six ends and yes. And then on the bottom is going to be nine. Those two threes. Those three twos are still down there, right? Yeah, I like it. So eight M's are M coming. 11. So it's going to be a total of M eleven. Eleven, I like it. And then those N square, that N squared is down there. Too. Right. That's it. Whew. And now you just really got to clean that up. Uh, how many N's will survive? Four. Four. Good. Is that an N, Jeff? Uh, this is three squared is uh, nine. Nine and eight times eight. Uh, seven, uh, seventy-two. All right. So now you can try to attack part B of the problem. This okay. work much the same way. Yeah. Yes, it's almost exactly the same. I love it because uh, what is being raised to negative power on the top? Everything. Everything. Okay. 
So I could take this whole thing down, and what did I end up doing? I took each of them individually down, so didn't the whole thing that used to be there, all of it came down. So you can either take it all down at once, or you can distribute this and take each one down. And at the end, everything that was up here went down. Either way you do it. That's the beautiful thing about math is, as long as you do it legally, it doesn't matter what order you do certain things in. we have order operations, so there is order of certain things, but this one you can either take it down first, or you can bring it in and then take the stuff down, it doesn't matter. Alright. Anything else from homework? No, okay. Alright, so let's let's review, oh. Yeah, uh, it was, uh, Oh, what's up? Yeah, I like it. Okay, cool. That's my uh, stall until they get the answer themselves. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. You got it. Okay, good. Uh, okay. So last time we looked at the very, the most basic form of factoring. The entire chapter 6 is about factoring. And then the entire chapter 7 requires you to know how to factor. Mm -hmm. So if at the end of chapter 6 you don't know how to factor, you can't do any damn thing in chapter 7. So this is a desperately important. In fact, factoring is like one of the most important things to know how to do. There's a lot of methods after that are built on it. Uh, I don't know if I can make it more realize more how important this chapter is we're about to get into. Um, factoring, yeah, chapter 6. So the very first style, uh, type of factoring we looked at was GCF. Which stands for what? Greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. Uh, so. so for example, um, How would I factor this here? Um, You're thinking like what would be left? What number can I take out of both? Four. Uh, four. 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 A. A squared. A squared. Square. They can both give two A's. He can give three. Well, that's nice for him. He can only give two. So I only take two. B. And then they can each give one B. So you always take out. That's why this common is in there, the greatest common factor, the biggest thing they both have in common. I like it. Not, not just common, but... Uh, uh, a, 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 B. That's a one. That's no, a one. Way. There we go. One. I like it. What's 4A squared B divided by 4A squared B? Uh, one. 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 I like it. And then 28 divided by 4? Seven. 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 I had three, I took two. A. I had four, I took one. Uh, B2. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had four and I only took one. Yeah. You see, that's great the way you can say that to yourself. <laughs> I had this many of these and I took four of them, now I got four less. I mean, that's exactly how you say that to yourself, right? This is the one that freaks people out. Why is that one there? Because how did I get seven? Because I'm dividing, right? What do I do now to check it? I would multiply that back in. So when I'm taking something out and dividing it out. So if you're ever in doubt, you just say to yourself, well, what's this divided by this? That's that's what you're actually doing. You guys with me? Because, for example, what's A cubed divided by A squared? A. 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 That's why there's an A there, because I'm dividing stuff out. I like it. Cool. So this is undistribution, but it's actually GCF method of factoring. Uh, let me do one that's a little bit easier, real quick, because uh, I want to show you something weird on the side. Now you're all afraid because it said it was easier. Well, yeah. Well, well, can you take any numbers out? No. No. But you can take how many x's out? X squared. 
So you're left with x minus 2. I like it. 1x minus the 2, because you took his, you took both of his x's away. Evil. So that's done, right? Uh, Jeff's going to do his normal weird shit on the side here. Uh, what could x be? Anything. Anything. I like how you guys are very specific. One. Technically, you're right. But it could also be two. Right? Or 18. Right? So what if what if x is, uh, what you got, Jeff? Four. What number is this, then? Four. Four cubed four minus, minus twice two. four squared. Oh, shit. 32. Good. 64 minus... Uh, 2 by 16. Uh, yeah, 4 squared is 16 uh, times 2 uh, is 32. 64 minus 32 is? 32. 32. All right, good. I like it. So that would be 32. So therefore, this must be a way to factor 32. Right, because that's what we just said. We factored this. So we any number that can be shown in this form... One way to factor it will be this. That's what we just did. That's why algebra is difficult, because we're doing an infinite number of numbers at once. So I would think it should be a little hard. Right? But that wasn't really that hard, was it? That one? That specific problem? Hopefully. What meant to be? So uh, what's this then? Uh, so that is if 32. What's this? If x is 4? 16. Yeah, 4 squared times 4 minus 2. 16 times? Uh, 2. 2. Is that a way to factor 32? Yeah. Yes, of course, yes. Good, I like it. So that actually is a way to check your work if you have time. You can just pick a value for the variable and see if the beginning does meet the end. It's supposed to be the same. Maybe, maybe. All right, so this, I don't think the book will ever ask you this, but it's really good to see that, I think, because that's the concrete example of the weird abstract shit we're doing here. Maybe. Sure. Sure. Why would x equal 2 not be the greatest thing to check here? Because then that'll be 0. Yeah, it'll be 0, right? So, I mean, that's, ooh, 0 is 0 times 2. is amazing. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, let me try to go the next level up. Let me see if they do that here. Yes, cool. I like it. whole nother level. Alright, I'm going to start off easy. You guys are going to be like, how is this another level, Jeff? This is easy. That would be the appropriate reaction to this. But then I'm going to do something weird with it. Alright, this is very, 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 very easy. No tricks. Well, how do you factor that? Very easy. No, no factors. Yes, you can. It's not that easy. Eight. Four times that. I can't take a 4 out, can I? No, just 8. Yeah, only this has a 4. This has got no 4. So I can't take any numbers out, but they both have an 8. So you can take an A out, and you're left with what? Kick ass. Now, that was almost too easy. You're all like, what the hell's the point there, Jeff? This is the point. Uh, I'm going to write the exact same problem. I love it. This is where you guys get worried about if I have all my meds. <laughs> yeah. What does it say? This is 4x times something minus y times that same thing. Since they both had that thing, I could take that thing out, right? Yes, sir. You can take the B3 out. Yeah, be more specific with what you said. You take the... B plus 3. Like, thank you. I like Because they both... Now let me let me freak you out one more time. Do either one of these things have a B? Yes. You know, they don't. Neither one has a B. Uh, what do I mean by that? Do you guys are you guys cool with the fact eight has a four and a two? Does eight have a three? So I want to make sure everybody understands what I mean. when I say have a, I mean as a factor, uh -huh. right? You can say, well, yeah, eight's five plus three, but that's not what I mean. Does eight have a three in it? No, uh -huh. eight has a four and a two, right? It's got three twos if you break it all the way down. You guys kind of with me? So, uh, it, just because I can write eight as five plus three does not mean eight magically has five in it. Because that means factors, that means multiplication. 
So do either one of these have a B in it? No, there's no B anywhere in there. I see a four, an X, and a B plus three. Mm -hmm. and this guy's got a Y and a B, B plus three. So they both have a B, B, plus, B, plus, three. B plus three. So whatever was here, if it's the same thing, I can take it out. So in front, I'm gonna put B plus, B plus three. three. 4x minus And I'm left with 4x minus y. minus y. You just cover the thing you took out. It's nice. So I'm left with 4x minus y. If you check it, what's b plus 3 times 4x? There it is. b plus 3 times y? There it is. Oh, shit. So if you make a7, these would both have a 7, right? Mm -hmm. If you make b4, what's this? Uh, four, four plus three, seven. which is seven. They seven. would both have a seven. I mean, so A is something I don't know. B plus three is something I don't know. Mm -hmm. They should work kind of the same way. How are you guys feeling about it? Bless you. So many guys. He's looking at me at least, but All right, let's do another one. Just I, I was thinking, what do you want to see with the, this uh, example? They are same, right? The, this one and this one, they're same. Yeah, same, so same I'm not going to give you this problem, the Legion, I'm just going to give you that problem. Oh, okay, so okay. you got to realize that they okay. both have B plus 3. Oh, okay. I like it. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> you guys get what I'm trying to say here? I mean, we have to start to realize that when I see B plus 3, that yeah. is one thing yeah. in terms of multiplication, right? That's one thing. So they both have this, so that whole thing comes out. Let's do another. So if it was 4x in parentheses 3b minus y in parentheses 3b, then we could take the b out. Totally. I like it. Let me write that down. Let me write down what he just said. Alright. So Nathan's got to get out. If I had 4x times 3b minus y times 3b. You could take a B out, and you could also take a 3 out, but if you just wanted to take a B out, you could all day. Do these have a B in them? Yeah. Yes, I see a B. They also have a 3 in them, right? So then I would take out a 3B, right? But yeah, you're right. If you wanted to, you could just take a B out, and you'd still have another 3 you could take out. Sure, I love it. Kick ass. Do you guys see the difference between that and that? This has no B in it. It has a B plus 3 in it. This... They have bees in them. They have bees. Yeah. Right, I like it. Cool. Okay. Because that one goes together and the other one, the other one can be separate. Like, that's just... Yeah, because when I say it has it in it, what I mean is yeah. it's a factor of it. Okay. And to be a factor of something, you have to use what operation? Okay. Yeah, multiplication. multiplication. This uses yeah. shit. So the whole B plus 3 is a factor, but B and 3, they're not separately factors because they are added. So those are two terms, right? No, not Yes, yeah. but in terms of multiplication, this is 4x times this one expression. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that expression is the same in both. Mm -hmm. So that whole expression can come out. All right, so no. uh, So now you just treat y minus 7 as another thing to look at. So in your numbers, if you look at your numbers, what can come out? A 2. Now look at your variables. Your, well, how many m's can come out? 1. 1 m. And how many y minus 7's can come out? 1. 1. Do you see how the process doesn't care? It's like, how many m's? How many y minus 7's? You know, that you, it's, the process doesn't care. You just take out whatever that is, however many you can take out. Uh, so what's left here? Three. Three. You took his M and you took his Y minus seven. Yeah, that's it. Plus uh, two. Two. <coughs> M. You had it. two M's. You took one, so you got one left. You had one of these. You took it all. How do you check? Yes, yes, sir. Can you start at the end of the seven? All right, here we go. You ready? 
Uh, -huh. uh six divided by two? Ah, okay, cool. All right, oh shit, all right. Three, that's gone, that's gone. Plus two, that's uh, one and left, and that's gone. All right, become a three. Now, I hate it when people do this perfectly, and then they write 5M here. Why, why can't you write 5M here? These aren't like terms. These are not like terms. You can, yes, ma'am. Oh, here? All right, so what number can come out of both 6 and 4? 2. How many M's can I take out of both? 1. See, so this is the process of this, this whole thing here. This is what we call, this is the GCF. This is the biggest thing that they both have in common. That is the GCF. They both have a 2, they both have 1M, and they both have 1 line minus 7. Some of them might have more than that, but they both have that. Right? All right, one more of these, and then we're going to do the, the next level. There's always another level. Oh, yeah, let's crank it up. So some of you guys might have been expecting this next thing. Let's see if, you, if anybody was. Now, let me ask you a very strange question about this. How many terms are there? Two terms. Two terms. There are two terms. There's this term and this one. Plus this term. That's weird. I know, but I'll we'll get over it. Because B minus seven is one factor then. Right? That term, that term. Uh, Alright, so what can come out number wise? Four. Four. How many A's can come out? Four. One A. How many B minus sevens can come out? Two B minus sevens. 2b minus 7. And again, remember my little offset that a bit so the first answer goes there. It's a really simple mistake to make. So 12 divided by 4. 3. I had two a's, I took 1. A. I had 3b minus 7's, I took 2. 1. B minus 7. And we stopped it for a second. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. Cool, right? Okay. I had two a's, I took one of them, so I got one left. How many B minus 7's did he have? Three. How many did we take? Two. So how many does he have left? One. 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 The, the thing you say to yourself doesn't change. B minus 7 is just one more thing to consider. Look at your A's, look at your B minus 7's, look at your C plus 11's, whatever the hell they have. So that's the first term is right there, plus 2. Two? No. A. No. All the A's are gone? Yeah. Um, and all the B minus 7's are gone. Yeah. Now, technically, you could distribute here just to simplify the inside of that, but if you don't, I don't care because it's all about factoring at the moment. All right. Let's see the next level. All right, here's the next level. So this is all still GCF. You guys realize that, right? We're still looking at GCF, we're still looking, it's just that now I can have little expressions as how many of those can I take out. So here's the, uh, the next level. Where are we at? My Roman numerals are getting way up there. Four, I've been using four too much, yeah. Is there a number that can come out of all four of those terms? No. No. Is there any letters that can come out of all four? No. No. I, want, I really want you guys to realize that. So on the one time you're like, good job, Jeff, you made a problem I can't do shit with. No, no five terms. Right? Not yet. No. All right. I really want you to be with me on this. Uh, see how if it's written like this, I can see like what can come out. So really what I do next is when I see 
four or more terms, I do this next procedure. This is what I do. I try to see if I can write it like this. So how would I write it like this? I look at the first two. I, I do what's called grouping. If I group the first two together, can something come out of both of those? Yes, I can take a five out. And what would be left? 3x minus y. Good. Now I group the next two terms. What can come out of those two? Three. A three can't come out. Uh, x. Yeah, they both have x. an x. And what would be left? X, uh, 3x minus y. Same. All right, now, what do they both have? 3x minus y. Yeah, these both have this. Let me let that sink in for a second. So that first step might feel, I don't know how it feels to you. It might feel like you're cheating or it might feel like, why do I only do two when we're always doing all of them? Because if I can't do shit out of everything, I take a step back and I say, well, can I take something out of parts of it? And maybe something matches after that. That's what we try next. That's the next thing we try. This is just realizing that you're allowed to do this. You can do a lot of shit in math you don't even know you can do. Some of you guys try to do stuff you can't do, but... Uh, so what can come out of both? 3x minus y. Yeah, 3x minus y. And then what, what's really cool is when you do this, you just go, okay, what's left there? 5 plus x. That's some crazy shit. 